What's up everyone, Ian Stewart here, and in this video I want to quickly show you a few ways that I like to use super clips in Wavelab Pro 10. So the first way that I really love to use them is for stem mastering sessions. So we can see here, I've got four stems that I've gotten from a client, drums, bass, synths, and vox. Now, normally in a mastering session, I've got a pitch track, which is a, a reference track. And the reason I use a reference track is I can set up the routing so it goes out a hardware send to my analog chain. And then I've got a catch track set up and I've got the routing set so that the input is set to my main recording bus. And then I can just put it in monitor and play back from the pitch track and reference it, listen to it through my analog chain with all the effects in real time on the catch track. And then when I'm ready, I can just record enable and record it right onto the timeline. With stems though, that gets a little complicated. Um, and you probably want to do any mixing or adjustments or tweaks to the stems first at the stem level, uh, individually, maybe not through your analog chain or maybe just one of them going through your analog chain. Um, and then treat it sort of like a normal stereo master. So the way I do that is I, I bring these, these, um, stems in and I just put them on standard stereo tracks and let's just um, add a few effects here. Let's, let's add um, like an EQ um, to the drums. That's popping up on my uh, other screen here. Let's add an EQ to the drums and let's add uh, some, maybe uh, some compression to the bass. I'm just grabbing the fab filter stuff because it's right at the top and easy and and uh, I don't know maybe uh, maybe let's add a, a different EQ to the the synths. Um, let's use the Ozone Nine equalizer there and um, again popping up on <laughs> different screens here and then on uh, on the vocals let's say maybe we need a, um, a deesser or something. So we'll, we'll grab uh, grab the Steinberg deesser here and bring that up, and um, <clears throat> and so maybe we tweak these a little bit and we're we're feeling good about where they are. Um, then what I'll do, and often I, actually I'll just do this first, but maybe you want to dive in and just get an idea of of where you're going. I'll select these four clips, and then I'll come into the process tab and I'll say create super clip. Now, there are a couple ways you can create a super clip. The way I like to do it is using what they call an iClip, which is an internal sub montage. And that stores everything in your main montage file. And I, I find that really convenient. But if you wanted to ex export it as an external audio montage and reference it in this montage, you can do that too. And the, the difference there is that basically the internal clip, again, it keeps it all in that one main montage session the external saves it as two separate montages. So you can open um, your stem montage directly if you want. I'm gonna do internal. I'm gonna say place on first available track. I'm going to include track effects. So that means that these effects that I've loaded up here are gonna be included in the internal montage. And I'm just gonna call it planet hop. Uh, let's call it stem mix. And that's just the name of the song, call it stem mix. Hit OK, and it's going to go ahead <clears throat> and render it out and bring it in. And it's going to put it on that, that first track that we had it loaded up on, the drum track. But now what I can do is I can just go and move it to my pitch track. And now I could monitor this through my analog chain just like I would with anything else. Now, the first thing you might notice here is it looks like the... Uh, peaks are kind of clipped off. Well, because WaveLab's working at floating point internally, um, either 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on how you have it set up, you can actually just grab the envelope there and pull the level down and all your peaks are retained. And actually, you can come in and I've always got to remember, I've got to enable the listen on this track so that's not muted, but I can come in to the process tab, grab the meta normalizer, run my pre-gain leveler and it's going to go through and set the gain so that it's kind of optimized um, for my analog chain. Um, I'm just going to reset this envelope. 
Um, so now this is at the, the level that I would normally like it to come out and hit my analog chain. Um, and if I go ahead and enable this, uh, I'm not recording the system audio, but you'll probably hear it through my mains if I play it real quick. And that's running through my analog chain. Now I can tweak it just like any regular stereo master that I would work on. Um, so that's the first use case, but um, <clears throat> I want to show you. So um, uh, you know what? I may have had that that selection backwards. It looks like it's retained these uh, effects. I think either I forgot. I don't remember if I forgot to check it or if uh, I don't know. You know what? They're in there as well. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do real quick is just remove these tracks um, and then show you what I just did very quickly in a little more detail. So let me just remove these. Um, so now we've got our two main tracks, our pitch track and our catch track, and I'll close that down. I'll save this real quick. Now, if you want to edit the stem balance, you want to go in and edit the effects on the stem, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can either right click on this super clip and say, um, edit source, or the way I like to do it is if you hover, um, right up at the top of the clip here, I say, and it's not changing. Well, the cursor's not changing, um, but normally if you hover up at the top of the clip here, there we go, the cursor changes, and if you double click there, it'll open this internal sub montage. And now you can see, um, if we go through, if you look over in the inspector here in the track inspector, we've got, you know, pro Q on the first one, pro C two on the bass stem, the ozone nine EQ on the synths and the DS are on the vocals. So all those effects have, have been copied in onto these tracks. And now you can, you can go back and you can change the balance of your stem mix or do any additional tweaking that you need. And when you save it, it's going to be uh, re-rendered out and, substituted into your main montage. So if, let's say, just for example, if I mute the bass stem, um, right, here's what this looks like now. If I go ahead and mute the bass stem, it's gonna re-render itself. And now when we come back, um, oh, gotta play through here. I don't know if you can hear that, but the bass is not included in there now. Um, <clears throat> so it updates in real time. Um, super useful way to be able to do stem mastering. Now, the other way that I like to use super clips, and I'm going to try it right within this. I've never done it before. I've always just done this on a traditional um, stereo master. But the other way that I like to use it is, let's say on this clip... Um, Let's just pretend that for this section, we we want to, uh, I don't know, maybe we want to make the drums wider or something. Uh, maybe not the most realistic example. So I've just split this clip in, into three. And I'm going to go ahead and on this section in the middle, I'm going to load up a mid-side uh, plug-in, um, MSCD, and, um, you know, say maybe we bump the side level up 2 dB. So the drums get a lot bigger at this point. And now this is a bit experimental. I'm going to go and I'm going to say uh, in process, create super clip. Um, let's try this. Well, okay. So it's not letting me do it that way because it's already part of an internal uh, sub montage, but let's see if we, say export as external. Let's try that. Um, select the folder real quick. Let's put it there. Yeah, there we go. So that's actually a good example of the difference between internal and external. So now if we look in the folder here, we can see uh, Planet Hop drum stem edits is now this is a separate montage um, saved in that folder. But the neat thing is now I can go and add 
say I now want to add, um, I know I have EQ on the, the track, but, but say I just wanted to add EQ on the clip. I could add EQ. I could add um, some compression if I wanted. And now I can make these changes. I can balance the EQ. I can do some compression if I need. That applies to the whole drum stem. But if I need to go in and change the width on that one section, I can double click here. And now this is opening up that sub montage that which is now an external one and i can go in and i can come back and say you know what 2, d 2 db was too much i need to just bump it up 1 db now i can save that and now that edit's going to appear in here um so this is a really powerful way actually to do effectively do plug-in parameter automation. So you may know that um, in WaveLab, you have envelopes for volume and fades and pan, and there are actually a couple other modes I'm gonna talk about in a future video, um, but you don't have it for plug-in parameters. So the way a lot of mastering engineers um, actually like to do plug-in automation, not just in WaveLab, but in, in a number of, of programs, is to basically split up clips and set the parameters differently on different sections and then create crossfades, um, which is kind of an effective way of morphing between two settings in a, in a really uh, neutral, clean way. Um, so you can do that. The trick then becomes, well, okay, say I make some some automation moves like that with you know my mid-side plugin or whatever, but I have a, a compressor and EQ after it. I don't want to have to go change that compressor and EQ three times. In WaveLab, you can just turn this into a super clip here, and now your EQ and compression can live on that super clip, and you can make single adjustments there, and the granular adjustments that you need to your MS or, or whatever the pro plugin processing may be uh, inside that reference clip. So those are a few ways um, that you can use super clips in WaveLab Pro 10 uh, for stem mastering, for automation, um, and a number of other things. Honestly, it, it, this is really just scratching the surface. I mean, I, I've used it if I need to do edits, if I'm using an, an external audio editor, um, I may do those, save those to a super clip so that the edits are retained within the super clip. And then if I get an updated mix, I can go and replace those files, but still have a good visual marker of where I did those edits. I can add in markers into the super clip if needed. They just show up there, but I don't have to see them at the top level. So there are a lot of ways to use this. Um, uh, the sky's kind of the limit. Be, get creative with it. See what you can do. Um, but these are a couple of my favorite ways to use super clips in WaveLab Pro 10. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Take care.